We take a look at the oldest and largest Irish organization here in the U.S., the Ancient Order of Hibernians. Founded in the mid-19th century, the organization is still going strong today. If you're Irish, come into the park. Although the Ancient Order of Hibernians is the largest and indeed oldest Irish organization in the U.S., with a very visible presence for generations at St. Patrick's Day parades across the country, most people know very little about the organization. The order, which traces its roots back to 16th century Ireland, was officially founded in New York in 1836. Its original purpose was to protect the Catholic Church and the clergy from the attacks of the National American Party, or as they were better known, the Know Nothings. In 1836, the Irish uh, were in a very bad position in this country. Uh, they were the immigrant group that uh, a lot of American nativists hated the most. Uh, the Hibernians were forced to defend Old St. Patrick's Cathedral in 1854. Uh, and this they did by secreting themselves behind the tombstones. And when the mob of know-nothings came to destroy the church, uh, they rose and uh, the know-nothings passed without doing any damage. Uh, the Hibernians had to defend themselves just a few months later in 1854, when uh, on July 4th uh, the Hibernians were parading through Greenwich Village, and the people that attacked them was uh, Bill Poole, who was the character that the Gangs of New York uh, is based on uh, the anti-Catholic leader in the uh, Gangs of New York. That was Bill Poole. And the incident was the July 4th attack on the Hibernians parading peacefully uh, through uh, Greenwich Village. During the Civil War, they rushed into the Union ranks. They organized uh, very quickly. And after the war in the 1870s, they were up to about 30,000 members spread throughout the country uh, through the mining districts uh, principally. You could follow the road of Hibernian uh, divisions across the country just like you could uh, the Irish immigration because in practically every small town in the United States uh, you would find a division whether it was uh, miners up in the Michigan Peninsula or uh, out in the mining towns of the far west. Uh, it was the road of the Irish and the road of the Hibernians it was practically identical. Today, the Hibernians have divisions in 44 states across the U.S. A national convention is held every two years with representatives from the various divisions, county and state boards. Ned McGinley from Wilkes Bar in Pennsylvania is currently president of the national board. The Ancient of Hibernians in America is a very large and geographically dispersed group. Uh, we're talking 60,000 members, and then with our Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians, which is a distinct group, but at the same time works with us on all of our projects and at all of the different conventions. Uh, we are, we're probably about 15 to 20,000 of those, say 75,000 uh, total membership throughout the United States. Uh, we're in 42 states and the District of Columbia, and we have over 300 divisions in these various states, and so. Uh, when you, you look at us, we can, we're a dispersed group in our own way, and yet we come under a national board, which is elected every two years. In the even-numbered years, there is a national convention, and that was uh, in Connecticut uh, the last time. And uh, that's when, in last June, and it's usually in the summertime. It's between June and July. Uh, the state boards then have their own conventions, and there are 22 of those uh, throughout the United States in the, in the odd-numbered years. And so uh, our organization kind of pulls together somehow, connects uh, through all of this, uh, uh, these different levels uh, in, in the different conventions, etc. It's a great day on the Irish. The AOH have long been associated with St. Patrick's Day parades, particularly the New York parade on Fifth Avenue. While the various divisions still march in the parade, the organization is no longer involved in running the parade, according to the New York State President, Martin Kelly. The Ancient Order of Hibernians uh, ran most of the parades, uh, St. Patrick's Day parades in this country, especially in New York City, where in the 1850s the Irish came here in droves, and most, a lot of them joined the Ancient Order of Hibernians, and the Ancient Order of Hibernians kind of took over the parade in New York City. And more or less, they ran the parade up until the 1990s, where things were a lot cheaper 
until that time because everything was donated more or less by the city and different individuals. But it became so expensive to run the parade that a, a special, the Hibernians decided they had to get out of running the parade so that the corporation formed. But that doesn't mean that the Hibernians do not march in it. The Hibernians are very much involved in like marching it. All the units can still march. Uh, they can affiliate with the parade. And uh, the, I expect all the Hibernians will be marching again this year uh, in the parade. For many Hibernians, a membership in the Order is an opportunity to socialize and network. But the organization also involves itself in political issues, such as emigration reform in the U.S. and the peace process in Ireland. In recent years, the focus has been on supporting various charities on a local and national level. Today, our focus would be on our Friendship, Unity, and Christian, and Christian Charity. Some people would say true Christian charity. So we've become a very much a charitable organization, especially within our communities. Uh, in fact, for the month of March, we'll be promoting the, the Great Hunger or the Irish Hunger Project. When we talk about the original Hibernians, the core group of the ancient Orient Hibernians, they probably arrived here during uh, the Great Hunger in Ireland, which would have been in the 1840s. And today, we'd like to bring that forward and in the month of March, which unfortunately has become a, a more of a celebration, uh, and, I, and I love the fact people celebrate the Irish, their Irish heritage, but we'd like to bring in a great hunger project, uh, a Hibernian hunger project, which we will bring hopefully to local establishments and local areas uh, where all of our 300 odd divisions are, are located, where people can come in this modern age when we have areas of pockets of hunger or people who are uh, who go to food kitchens and who are uh, short of food on a daily basis that we will be able to help these people in the month of March and in doing that uh, kind of portray our heritage and our, our vision and what we see as the real ancient order of Hibernians, our legacy if you will. Uh, that, that would make us uh, a relevant organization to today and that's, that is our roots. I joined the Hibernians because, being an Irish American, I wanted to try to meet other Irish people and get together with them. I stayed in the Hibernians because I realized that being together with other people in the Hibernians, we could do things together. We could do charitable things together. We could keep our culture alive. We could create a, a, some meaning for the people in Ireland. And uh, the organization for me became more than just a friendship. It became a place where I could go and do things together as a group. I joined the Hibernians because I just got out of college in St. John's. It was 1994. Uh, I, was I was working for a living, and I was kind of bored. And I wanted to still stay involved in the Irish culture. And I joined the uh, Hibernians at the Great Irish Fair in Brooklyn on Labor Day weekend in 1994. And... I just wanted to stay involved and to grow in my culture and to meet other people and to do new things. It seems to be um, that there are a lot more young people now involved in the Hibernians. Would you agree? Yes, I would. Um, the Hibernians are getting younger every year. Uh, it's, a, it's a good way to network. Uh, but it's also uh, it's, an, it's an organization in which it doesn't matter what age you are. Uh, as, as long as you're in the spirit of friendship, unity, and Christian charity, you're always welcome and you're always accepted. My grandmother is from Mayo, and uh, I'm a principal and I'm involved with the Animal Society and the Board of Education, and I think it's important for the younger Irish people, the kids, to be involved with their heritage and to keep in touch. And it's also a strong organization as far as uh, leads for jobs and employment and social and uh, it's a very important driving organization. I think it only could survive if we had the kids involved. Some of the leaders and members there of the ancient order of Hibernians, probably better known as the AOH. 